Well, it's time for our business update now with Kate Moody. And we focused a lot on the trade war between the US and China, but demand for made in the USA products doesn't seem to be suffering. It hasn't necessarily disappeared. You're starting with some dramatic footage from Shanghai of shoppers swarming an American store on its first day. Yeah, it's all the more extraordinary in the current context, of course, Olivia. Uh, the wholesale chain Costco had opened its first outlet in mainland China, but it attracted so many shoppers that it was forced to close its its doors after just a few hours. Traffic jams were reported around the location in the suburbs of Shanghai, while the aisles inside were gridlocked, as you can see there, uh, and police warned of overcrowding. Costco is known in the U.S. for its bulk sizing and low prices, and it's the latest international brand to test that hypermarket model in China. Carrefour, Metro and Tesco have all reduced their presence there in recent years, while online retailers led by Alibaba are increasingly popular. Costco has been struggling to attract the millennial generation in the U.S. It seems to be off to a fairly good start uh, in China, despite those escalating tensions between Washington and Beijing. Well, Chinese state council, meanwhile, is considering measures to boost domestic consumption. The moves could, allow, could include allowing stores to stay open for longer hours, supporting the development of new commercial and entertainment complexes, and possibly lifting restrictions on car purchases. Sales and economic growth have, have slowed since the start of the year as American tariffs weigh on exports and consumer demand and confidence. Donald Trump has suggested that bilateral negotiations could start again soon, although few details have so far been released. Well, the ripple effects are reaching far beyond U.S.-China ties. Europe's economic powerhouse is struggling as a direct result of those global trade tensions. Germany confirmed that its economy contracted from April to June, putting it on the verge of an official recession. Wasim Korne has the details. It's official. Germany's economy contracted in the second quarter of 2019. The numbers were published by Germany's Federal Statistics Office on Tuesday. The country's GDP dropped 0.1 percent between April and June. It could be the end of a golden decade for Germany. Its economy relies heavily on exports, which dropped 8 percent in June weighed down by a raging tariff war between China and the United States. We're worried. Our economy is weakening because of external factors, and our businesses are having to deal with international trade wars, currency wars, and the uncertainty over oil supplies. But external factors aren't the only reason. Germany's economy faces structural issues including in its world-renowned auto industry, which has struggled to bounce back from the emissions scandal. That has contributed to a significant drop in morale among business owners, with the monthly confidence index hitting its lowest level since 2012. These new data come after a mediocre first quarter for Germany's economy, which only grew 0.4 percent between January and March. The poor performance is setting off alarm bells. A decline of Europe's economic powerhouse could have widespread implications for the bloc. All eyes are now on the next quarter. If Germany's GDP contracts again, that would make the country officially enter a recession for the first time since 2013. Let's check in on the day's trading action now. The DAX with a rel relatively strong showing, despite that disappointing economic data in Germany. Uh, the CAC is up about the same here in Paris. Shares in Milan led gains, even as Italian politicians struggle to form a new coalition government. Wall Street has fallen again as it continues its volatile month. Uh, the Dow Jones erasing an earlier 150-point gain. Shares of the pharmaceutical giant Johnson & Johnson are up about 2 percent after a ruling in an opioid case. The company was ordered to pay $572 million for downplaying the addictive quality of some of its drugs, which have contributed to a national opioid crisis. The fine was a fraction of the penalty that prosecutors had requested. Johnson & Johnson could still face similar trials in other states. EU officials insist that the United Kingdom will have to pay the so-called Brexit bill, even if it leaves the bloc without a deal. Prime Minister Boris Johnson has suggested that his government would refuse to settle its financial obligations in the event of a no deal. The so-called divorce bill is estimated to be some 39 billion pounds. That's currently around 44 billion euros. Officials have said earlier this summer that it would be payable in euros while, rather than in British currency. On Tuesday, EU Economic Affairs Commissioner Pierre Moscovici insisted that the nature of the UK's exit wouldn't change its requirements. Take a listen. 
Les Britanniques the British will have to settle their payments and their financial contributions in all circumstances, regardless of whether there's a deal or no deal. The Prime Minister says no. Once he's taken a closer look, he'll understand that these are legal and financial obligations which must absolutely be respected, and they will be. It's very important that there be no conflict about this, because it's a condition of trust in the discussions to come. One of the many, many issues uh, without an answer for the moment. Indeed, that is one very expensive divorce settlement. Thank you very much, Kate Moody.